For Penn State, Bowling Green gets their hands on the football first. Forney booms seven of them into the end zone last week. That's a pretty good defense when you've got a kicker that makes sure you can't run the ball back. Leon Weathersby and Steve Holmes at around the Bowling Green goal line. Coach Paterno was extremely pleased with his kicking game and coverage game last week. He said it was a way to start the 98 season. Might have been a big difference in that win over Southern Miss because Southern Miss's kicking game self-destructed. Again, Forney into the end zone and nowhere to go with the football. He suffered through injuries the last couple of years. He needs to stay healthy for them to have a chance. And going long on the first play. Incomplete. And the guys who will greet Hollis and Lige and some of the runners. Got some quickness on this football team. And David Fleischauer, one of the few we'll talk about today, has added 20 pounds over the offseason. Courtney Brown is a good one. The linebacking group, Gatton, Short, and Mac Morrison, we'll call their names a lot today. And in the secondary, not particularly big, Danny, but quick. And, and this is the kind of thing that Bowling Green is going to need to do to try to take advantage of some of those guys in the secondary. Third and five for the Falcons. A little swing is dropped. Wouldn't have been a first down anyway. Got to admire Bowling Green's courage, Danny. They went long on the first play. A low line drive is going to bounce around the 40 and take a nice Falcon bounce. Branch was tempted to pick it up. Offensively for the Nittany Lions, as Lewis told you, two quarterbacks today, beginning with Kevin Thompson. Mike Saramelli scored twice last week. And as Danny told you, Cordell Mitchell's a good one. The receivers, all these guys will catch footballs today, including Jones and Nastasi, who had a couple of great catches last week. And Danny, I love this front line, almost 300 pounds apiece. These are all big guys. They're six foot five and a half. They average 308 pounds. So Thompson ready to go to work for Penn State on its first offensive possession. This is Mitchell slashing to the outside, and he may go. Touchdown. Seventy-seven yards. What a beginning! Eight moments ago, just a simple off-tackle play, and Mitchell was gone. Danny, but it's a great block by Mike Ceramelli out the, at the fullback position, allows Mitchell to get outside, walls it off, seals it, and then it's just pure speed. If this guy's injured, I don't want to see him when he's 100%. <laughs> It's a good point. Falcons lost 37 nothing to Missouri and did not get to midfield last week. We'll see on their second possession if it gets any easier. They'll run this one out. But not very far for the national championship when the season ends. Third and long setting up a screen and read perfectly. It'll be incomplete. What a solid hit down there. Might have been Brandon Short in on the against Missouri. Pollock's second punt. The first one was a dandy, and the second one pushes Branch back inside the 30. Still going with the football. And still loose. Look at this. He's got one man to take care of. Can you believe this? Touchdown. Second and third and fourth look. Deep punt, and what happens with that punt? It was kicked so far, he out kicked the coverage, and that allowed Branch to maneuver around. Now, you take a look at these quick feet. <laughs> keep working, keep working. Guys are still trying to make blocks downfield, and then once he gets to the open area, there's one thing that's not going to happen. The punter is not going to make the tackle on him. Little move, little juke inside, gets back to the outside, and then it's just running by him into the house for six. Bruce is not very big, but somehow eluded the people coming at him when he first caught the ball. Third and four. Penn State looking blitz. It's a pitch. And the Lions were ready for it, coming with a run blitz. They'll just keep building toward the heavens, Danny. It's tremendous, because if they build it, they will come yes. to this place. 
The fake to Mitchell and a quick pop. And a nice. Kevin Thompson running the show for the Lions. And a first down for Penn State That's up his first catch. Mitchell in the backfield looking right going left looking to hang on to the football on third and four already ahead by two scores. Coming with the blitz. Dotson tried to sneak out of it but they got the him. show on the field will be a lot better than that view. Mm -hmm. <laughs> One of the prettiest parts of the world. Name it to roll on first down and it's picked off. Touchdown. LaVar Arrington. Athlete this is. Watch on the sprint out. He reads it. Comes underneath the pass. Sure handed. Makes the grab. Tucks it away. Turns it inside. This guy has been all over the football field for the Penn State Lions. He's been a running back. Look, Look at the white hats around the ball carrier. There will be many of them ball today. Side. Third ball. down. 0 of 3 today. Neiman on a quarterback to Indianapolis Colts. Unusual situation, third and long for Penn State. And not enough. Jones caught the Coach football. is never completely happy here. That's why Penn State wins, wins, and wins more. Thompson shooting for the first down. Nastasi's got it inside the 30. Joe Nastasi, second and long for the Lions, who are up by three touchdowns. Loose ball is lost, and Bowling Green gets the first Penn State turnover of the game. A break for the Bowling Green now on offense, trailing 21 0. And some room. Snyder with a quick hit, incomplete. And again, in a Penn State has license plates that say. Things like the Big 11 and Joe knows. Thompson with one on one coverage to Jones. Makes the catch. Lost the ball. And still, it's ruled. It's the catch. Good close on the outside, and the ball gets stripped. Look at it, how. That's Junior Williams again, wrenches up, strips the ball, but he's sitting on his butt. He can't get off the, the turf. Yeah, we would missed him ourselves. Don't blink. Again, getting nice one-on-one -on -one coverage. Nastasi. And Joe Nastasi inside the twelve. Cordell Mitchell looking for his second touchdown. He's got it. Day for Cordell Mitchell. Another great block on the outside by Sir Melly. Clears that hole. Just hammer cuts him down. Pursuit from Bowling Green's defense. Central Florida may have the number one quarterback in college football. A busted Johnson, play. Danny Kepley. I'm Jim Barber. Snyder trying to move around. Nowhere to go. Does a great job. Now look at this. Look at the time the young quarterback has to throw the ball. He's still looking. It's a coverage sack. Great back end coverage. No place to go. Then the pursuit is going to get there. Let me, I was just going to say that'll be for number 400. <laughs> Rashad Casey getting his first work, and Mike Saramelli carries the football. That's a natural instinct for him. In fact, that's been one of the big concerns with Casey. We've told him time and time again, stay in the pocket. This time they go on. Another big hole, and it's the big tank with the ball, Saramelli. He said, hey, look what I do when I get that ball. I, I'm, I'm getting used to carrying it. You give it to me, I'll make a lot of big things happen. But look at the solid offense and, and explosion off the line of scrimmage. Casey two steps back, looking and connecting. And that was almost for a touchdown. This speed getting off the line of scrimmage. Now look at this. Good quick set. Nice touch. Lofts it up there. Allows the big receiver to run underneath it. Good concentration. Oh. Sarah Melly. Touchdown. Mike Sarah Melly's third touchdown of the season. The kick is blocked. And they can run this one back. 
And well on its way to a win, 34 nothing. As you're watching Big Ten football, the years was a 34 nothing lead on Southern Miss last week. It's a Southern Miss team that's beaten a lot of really good teams on the road. Snyder had to go one way, then the other, and makes the pass complete. And the ball is loose. Move on the inside. Now watch the closing and the tackle here. Boom! Gets that ball out. That's James Boyd. Use a score to get the Morrell picked up on their sidelines. This is the deepest. This time, this good passers got the range. And the kick is good, and the Falcons are on the board. That's to work with, and obviously, after every first down, the clock stops momentarily. Schneider intercepted, and that may go for a touchdown. It's Macklin. All the way down inside the Bowling Green 20. As if the Watch just the out pattern, pretty good coverage. Ball in and out of the hands, great tip drill by Macklin. Picks it up, heads down the sideline, picks up big yardage. And stay from about 33 yards out. And it is no good. Travis Boyd's 32-yard field goal is no good. So the first half ends with Penn State failing to add to the lead, but still very comfortably ahead at 34 to 3. The game Penn State gets to operate first. Near its own goal line. And the sound. Cordell Mitchell to start the second half, a short so game. Far. Over the middle, man wide open. Dan, Ken Dan Kendra was in the news. And it appeared that Kendra might come here yeah, after where Penn State has come up with many big plays. This is McCoo. And McCoo State has built up a pretty comfortable lead and is enjoying it. McCoo carrying the ball again. Inside. Omar Easy looking for the end zone. He's got it. That's up your toe, so you've got to beat the teams and beat up on the teams you're supposed to. A couple of yards deep in the end zone. And not even out to the 20. Ball game, seven years in a row. That's remarkable. And that's picked off. And that is a touchdown. Joe Dawkins in the right place at the right time. Going on, everybody's getting invited to it. Quick slant route. Ball's just thrown just past the outstretched hands of the receiver, and Dawkins does a great job looking that ball in. in fact, Leon Weathers be the only guy shaken up after the hit by Boyd. He's okay. Well, I, I tell you, that, that was one of the most tremendous hits that I have seen in any any uh, level of football, professional or uh, college, and, and he got hit right in the mouth when he was looking back away from the ball. Well, this is, as Lewis mentioned, one of the sports where you better keep your focus going because you could get popped pretty ugly. Three quarters in the books. Penn State, 48. Bowling Green, three. 15 minutes to go to Joe Paterno's 300th career win. You're watching Big Ten football. 100, 200 meter dash champion in high school. Getting one of the starting linebackers today for Penn State. Trading and exploding into it, making the tackle on the ball carry. Third and short, Schneider's got some time. Has he got a receiver? No, sir. And he also got and short for reserve quarterback Chad Krell. I'm sorry, third and five. Got a receiver. It's Branch. And you know what? If he had stayed in bounds, he might have been gone. Good job of standing in the pocket. Look at the good protection up front. Nobody's around him. He's got a good vision downfield. Lays the ball out there. Pretty good coverage. Branch does a great job of looking ball it in. It was John Huffnagel. And that, titles under Joe Paterno. Five undefeated teams. A whole bunch of bowl appearances. But great. Uh, back up to you guys. <laughs> All right, Lewis, I think that's Peachy Paterno, that ice cream earlier today on a number of plays. Uh, somebody asked Short, you know, why is he successful? That's a turnover, and Bowling Green gets the ball back. 
This time on the ground, this time not much. A big game, I tell you. They've had, they've had some tremendous big games and some big upsets all through the course of history here at Penn State. Linebacker, it, it's a whole university into itself to be a linebacker here with the great legendary people that have graduated. This time Schneider rolls to the inside looking for a touchdown. Rush for over 100 yards except one. He wanted to have better rushing defense. Schneider fakes the handoff, looking for the first down, broken up. No flags on the play. The ball turned over to Penn State. You can see, you can see the water on the back. Sometimes gave him the, gave him the Gatorade trick. And the coup close to the first down in the football game, maybe the last play. And Schneider says, hey, let's go for everything right here. And that's it. The milestone of 300 has been reached. I'll tell you what, JB, watching Mc McGuire break Maris's record and then mm -hmm. watching Joe Pop make this, is, this is unbelievable. This, this doesn't happen. This is history in a lifetime. We've got to see it in the last couple of weeks. It has been quite a week and quite a career for Joe Paterno, and it just keeps going. And how about these fans? Huh. Let's go down to Lewis Johnson. Okay, guys, thanks. Coach Paterno, it's been a long time coming, but 300 wins is here. I know the coaches, the kids have helped you do it, but what does 300 mean to you as a coach? Well, right now I'm overwhelmed. I, it's hard for me to even think. I just, there's so many people come to mind, so many uh, great athletes, great coaches, administrators, my family. All the good ones and the bad ones, and it's, I'm just, I, I really, I'm too choked up. No. Bryant, Gagliari, Robinson, Warner, Stagg, and now you in this elite group of coaches that won 300. Did you ever think it'd come like this? No, I never thought of it. I never cared. Congratulations to you, coach. Guys, back to you. Nice job, Lewis. That's not an easy assignment, hey. but he was, he was choked up, wasn't he? Uh, he? He really was. There's a tremendous amount of motion in that man, and we just got a, li a little peek of it. We'll continue from Beaver Stadium with Joe Paterno winning his 300th. You're watching Big Ten Football. <laughs> 